Welcome, everyone, and especially to group three. Uh, this is the you're, you are the third group going through these materials. Um, so far, we've had very successful groups one and two. So we're hoping you guys will also find this useful and interesting. And um, just to get you started so you can understand who I am, rather than me just yadder on, I'm going to play Welcome the little video. The rapid teacher training for open distance and online learning. My name is Andrew Moore. I am from a Johannesburg-based consultancy, and we have been invited by UNESCO to facilitate this third module, module 2B, on creating open educational resources. I'm very fortunate that in many ways, this is a follow-up to work that I've already done before in Zimbabwe. In 2019, I had the opportunity to go around to different cities and engage with many of your colleagues on a similar topic, uh, how to create curriculum resources. And um, so what are we going to be doing this time? Well, it's a bit different because of COVID-19 and of the need now for remote teaching. Uh, we are obviously going to try and model an approach for instruction uh, online rather than face-to-face, -face, as much as that saddens me, as I loved coming to Zimbabwe previously. However, these skills will be very useful in your own teaching. Of course, my focus is going to be on open educational resources. We're going to look at what are they, what are the potential benefits of using existing OER and creating new OER, we're going to be looking at open licenses. What do they mean? What do they permit you to do? And what do you need to be careful of? We are going to investigate how to find open educational resources. They're not all in one place. So how do you find them? We'll look at different search techniques. And we're going to spend a bit of time on creating and adapting existing OERs. And finally, in the last piece, we're going to be looking at how you can share your open resources not only with your colleagues in Zimbabwe, but potentially with teachers across the globe. I'm very excited to be here. I hope you are. I think we've got some great events and activities ahead. So let's get stuck in. Okay, there's my propaganda video. <laughs> All right. So, yes, I'm based in Johannesburg. I work for a little company we call Neil Butcher and Associates, but we're very fortunate in the sense that we have done a lot of work for UNESCO over the years. And um, so, uh, and I've done quite a lot in Zimbabwe. So I'm really, really excited that you guys are the next generation. I think some of you might even have been in those original workshops. Uh, we did some training in Harare, in Bulawayo, in Ashvingo, and in Mutari. So um, I might have met you once before. If not, now's the time to get to know each other. All right. So, um, uh, in order for me to get to know who you are, I asked you to fill in a questionnaire. So I'm going to have a quick look at the results of the questionnaire and uh, try and see if I can summarize who exactly are you guys. All right. So we don't have an opportunity for all 30 of us uh, to engage one-on-one uh, -on -one in these little synchronous sessions, but at least I can get a, a quick feel of where you are and how far I can push you. All right. So. Um, I asked, for example, which urban areas uh, is closest to where you work? All right. The reason I wanted to know this is because, you know, I've, I've been around a little bit and I think I know Zim a little bit. So I wanted to know if you are in any of those areas where I've worked. So um, we can see here the vast majority of you guys are in Harare. All right. So, yes, I've been there many times. And uh, the next big chunk, 21% are in Mashvingo. So that's cool. I've been there too. We had a beautiful workshop. Yeah, they spoiled us. They put us in the hotel right next to the ruins. So we had opportunities to go and have a look there. So that was cool. All right. So that's nice to know then. Both those centers uh, I'm aware of. And Bulawayo, nice. Uh, there's 10% of you from there. Uh, I'm. It's one of my soft spots, Bulawayo. Really, really do enjoy that town. All right. And then I asked you, which levels do you teach? Because I wanted to get a feel of how I should pitch this um, session three. And we can see that the vast majority of you are secondary and or 
primary. There's a couple of ECDs, and then we've got one person who is currently in higher education part time. Yes. All right. So, all right. Cool. So, we're looking at that intersection between primary and secondary. Um, how then I wanted to know uh, we, we're talking about creating OERs. Now, there's nothing special about creating OERs in terms of which tools you can use. All right. So, it's, it's the normal suspect. So, I wanted to know how many of you feel comfortable using a word processor. And of the people who completed the questionnaire, it's very clear that you guys are not scared of a word processor. All right. So, we can ask you to create worksheets and lab notes, et cetera, et cetera. All right. How about facilitating a Zoom meeting? All right. One of the things that's happening now is that more and more people are beginning to use these synchronous tools in order to engage with learners remotely. So that's what I'm doing with you guys now. But in, but in time, you guys might be doing a lot more of this with your students, especially as connectivity improves and becomes cheaper. Uh, we're hoping that you're going to do more and more of that. Let's have a look. Yeah, we're sitting uh, three... Uh, the uh, majority is is in the middle, but you can see it's quite a spread from those who feel quite comfortable in this platform to some who are feeling very, very new to it all. All right, so I need to keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to try and model it. Um, I don't know if I'm particularly good at it, but um, I'm going to try and model how to facilitate uh, Zoom meetings. Uh, rate your ICT proficiency in terms of searching the internet. So OERs, a lot of them out there on the internet. So uh, at the moment, do we need to waste time? Not waste. Do we need to spend time on uh, Google search and all that type of stuff? And you guys are feeling relatively confident in this area. All right. Up the right-hand side, which is the tech side. Um, teaching using phone apps, same type of story. You guys are beginning to feel comfortable now using your phones in order, as a teaching tool. So that's cool. And rate your access to digital devices. Again, you can see that. 50, 85% of you are saying, no, it's fine. You have access to a tablet or a smartphone or a, uh, a PC or a laptop. All right, so that's good. We do need to worry about this poor character down here. We'll have to investigate who that is. Um, uh, right, rate your access to internet connectivity. Again, uh, UNESCO has given you some data. We had to wait till it all got delivered. That's why we're a bit uh, late getting started with group three. But yeah, that's also looking very encouraging. All right, so that's nice. And then uh, how about your access to teaching resources? Do you feel that you've been hard done by, that you don't have access to nice resources? And that doesn't seem to be the, uh, the thing at all. Um, uh, you can see that... 30% uh, down at three and 48% up at four and even a couple there at five. Um, actually, not a couple, three of you. All right. So uh, it looks like then you're not struggling for teaching resources. So then we're going to have to change the way that we do this just slightly. Um, in some of the times I run this workshop, uh, people are concerned that they don't have enough resources. Uh, but you, as this group, seems to say that, no, you're not too bad off. All right, so what we're going to do instead of spend a lot of time finding quality OERs, we're going to ask you to create OERs that you can share. All right, so we're going to put the emphasis more on the creation and sharing. Uh, and then I wanted to know, are you, or do you love your tech or... Um, uh, is it like a necessary evil in these days, all right? And we can see here that the vast majority of you are quite happy to use technology in the way that you teach. Um, uh, let me just get this right again. If I go and see the actual question. Top of the chart. No, all right. Uh, use technology to teach. Uh, there were those who were quite happy to um, uh, not use it at all. And then again, your guys are up in the techie side. Uh, I like technology that is tried and tested, was on this side, and cool and the latest up this side. All right. But the majority is, well, the, the tallest count is sitting in the median, is in the middle, which is very healthy. All right. Because I tend to argue you don't want to use technology simply because it's cool. You want to use technology because it helps you achieve your objective, all right, your teaching and learning objectives. So that's nice. It looks like you guys are pretty savvy, but it is bent towards technology 
with these people on this side here. So cool. All right. Keep that in mind. Uh, tell me what motivates you to teach. Why do you get up in the morning? I, I like to use the mobile apps for the learning. Uh, so I can take care of my family. All right. So uh, it looks like subsistence is quite a high uh, issue here. And looking after the family is always a good thing. Um, but it's not necessarily teaching that that person identified as a passion. All right. Uh, availability of resources. I want to make the learners I teach realize that they were born for greater things. Oh, that's great. Realize that they were born for greater things. We get that nice and big for you. All right, so that's cool. Uh, I want to unlock greatness in my students. I also need to earn money to support my family. All right, okay, they, that's becoming a recurring trend. But this first part does show a passion for the profession. All right, the love of children, passion, and born a teacher to equip learners with relevant information needed in their daily lives. I not only help students set goals, but I celebrate with them when they reach them. Teaching is fun. Look at that, guys. Teaching is fun because it gives the opportunity to have a positive impact on young people on a daily basis. Every day presents an opportunity to make a difference. Okay. Look at that. That's lekker, lekker, lekker. Oh, that's a South Africanism for you. Um, so that's really, really admirable what they've written here. Just to import, uh, just to impart knowledge. Hmm. Getting new ideas each day and imparting knowledge. I have a passion to teach. I like teaching using ICT gadgets. So do I. Um, but again, remember what I said. It's not always about the tech. Tech must support the learning. To empower learners. Cool, cool. All right, and so it goes on. So the vast majority of you seem uh, uh, impassioned about your profession. So that's very encouraging and that's very exciting. All right, so let me just go back up here and then I can go to summary of the question. So the one I was interested in Sorry, give me a second. There's another way you can look at it. I've done that. All right. No, no, I'm wasting your time. All right. So, um, so what have I learned? So I've learned that you guys are passionate about your subject, um, that you are based predominantly in Harari and Mashvingo, that you are predominantly primary and well, but secondary is the bigger group, secondary education. Um, I have learned that you're not scared of technology, that the basics are in place. And there was almost no one who said that they're scared of tech. Um, so this is all boding well for this particular um, uh, module. So, all right. So you saw the little video. So what are we trying to do here? Um, so over this week, I am going to give you four. Let me get it up so you can see. I am going to give you four tutorials to work through, which will show you different aspects. Give me a second. So you don't need all that. Here we go. This is us. All right. Uh, four tutorials on various aspects of open educational resources. Now, OERs are becoming very much in vogue at the moment. UNESCO has just released their recommendations to the whole world, saying that uh, governments need to start embracing and using and creating and sharing uh, uh, resources across the globe. So uh, people in Kenya can share with Zimbabwe and Zimbabwe can share with Oman in the Middle East and so on and so on. All right. So the thinking then is why do us as teachers constantly have to reinvent the wheel when there are hundreds of teachers all producing very similar materials for teaching? So why don't we just share them and uh, be but with a license that allows us to adapt them? So that's kind of what we're looking at then is um, how do you do that? All right, what are the practical skills that are required in order to um, create and share materials across the globe with all these other teachers? All right, so the first tutorial is this one. 
it is what are OERs? So we're going to look at definitions and make sure that we're all on the same board in terms of what is OER. I mean, and you might have heard of freeware and you might have heard of massive open online courses, which are apparently free. And you've heard now of open educational resources. And some people talk of open learning and open education, and it's getting very confusing, all right, all these things. So we're going to unpack what are OERs, open educational resources. And we're also in this tutorial going to understand Creative Commons licensing, right? So the, the, the way that we know what these OERs allow us to do is because of their open license. So we're going to have a look at that. So I'm going to quickly take you in because this is going to be your work tonight or tomorrow morning. And um, if we go in here, you'll see we've got all these things. What are OERs? Blah, 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 definitions. And we've got benefits and we've got videos and we've got things on open educational resources another video here blah 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 for the longest time for the longest time all right so there's lots of nice goodies for you to have a look at all right and the um then they say well why is copyright so evil is it evil all right, so the idea is then you've got to kind of understand what is this all this about? Why do we even bother with OERs? I mean, we've always nicked stuff in the past. I was a teacher for 14 years, so I know exactly what we get up to. All right, so um, we're going to then investigate what is open licensing. So under open licensing, you're going to just quickly have a look at them, and then I want you to kind of get to grips with this diagram. All right, so... Open licenses basically allow us to take resources for free without asking for permission, and normally we're allowed to adapt them so that they better work for our teaching context. All right, so it sounds wonderful. No subscriptions, no money, no begging. You just take it, you just fix it, you just use it. All right, so um, that sounds good. But then the other side is that you then should be giving, sharing your best stuff with other teachers. All right, so you should be putting a little license on it and then sharing it. All right, so but what is the license? And then you have some control. You're not just giving it away. All right, you are um, some rights reserved. You, you are keeping the copyright, but you are making it easier for people to use. So what does all that mean? So that's what you're going to look at tonight. All right. Um, and blah, 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 blah. I want you to go through here. And that will be enough for uh, before we meet again on tomorrow. Tomorrow at the same time, 1400 hours. All right. So, um, okay. So number one then is on... What are these OERs and what is Creative Commons licensing? Then during the week, we're going to go through these other ones. So um, how do you find them? All right. So we're going to show you how to find them. And then we're going to ask you to um, uh, even look at some places where we know there's some tons of primary and secondary education uh, materials. But we are, don't want you just to go searching for stuff. We want you to have a plan. So you'll see there's even a section here where we ask you to go and have a look at your official at your official curriculum. And we're going to ask you to draw very carefully some search criteria in order to find what you're looking for. So the idea is you shouldn't just do a, like a high-level blanket search. You should be very specific in what you're looking for. So we want you to be able to access your own syllabi, your curriculum documents, and we want you to be able to then go on the internet and find these things. All right. Um, there's a nice section. I like this bit. This is about how YouTube, um, all these videos that you can now get online, huh? uh, which ones can you take copies of? All right. So it all explains how to do it there and so on. And then I want you to also spend a little bit of time in uh, this one here, OER Commons. All right. Because that's where all the primary and secondary goodies are. All right, so that's number two, where how to find them. And then the um, number three is how to create your own. All right, so later on in the week, we're going to encourage you now to start thinking about, okay, you found them and some of them you can use, some of them you can adapt, but how do you now put your own stuff out there? And when we looked at the survey before we came in, quite a lot of you say you've already got good resources. 
All right. So then what you need to do then is change your, the way you see OERs. This is for, rather you should be sharing your good stuff with other educators. So how do you do it? So in this one here, we'll show you some uh, uh, tips and tricks, how to revise and adapt and remix, etc. And then when you're creating your own, uh, what you need to be aware of. Okay. And there's a whole load of design considerations you need to be aware of. And then we want you to actually put the license on your um, resource. Give it a second. In this video, we now want to put a Creative Commons license on our newly created open educational resource. There we go. All right. So then it takes you through the steps, how to do it. It's not rocket science. It's actually very easy. So uh, we're going to show you that in number three. And then finally, the last one is how do you now share with other people? All right, so this fourth one then shows you what are your options. I mean, you might think, oh, I'm stuck in Mashvingo. It's very quiet now. The tourists have all gone. Um, so how how do we kind of get you in in the um, in the global community? All right, so we we've got some options about how to share your materials globally. So the first trick is. Um, uh, the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education has set up a little portal, a little database of where we can put our materials linked directly to the, um, sorry, uh, okay, these are all videos, uh, uh, linked directly to the curriculum. So we're going to um, show you how to access EduConnect, the MOPSI OER repository. And then we're also going to try and demonstrate how you can share them globally. So you had a look at OER Commons. Now do you want to put your own materials on OER Commons so other people can find them and can use them? All right. Obviously, you get uh, recognition, but people then go, oh, 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 that's nice. I could use that. All right. So how do you do that? And there's some, some steps about how to do it. All right. And finally, how to evaluate your OER. I keep saying your good stuff. Did you notice that? I keep saying, hey, you must put your good stuff up, all right? So how do you know it's good stuff? So here are some criteria to determine whether it's up to scratch to share globally. All right, and that's it. All right, The uh, if I now go back here, sorry, if I now go back, give me a second. Yeah, whoops, to be far. If I now go back here, we've put a little um, agenda for you. So here's the training agenda. So you can see all the goodies that are available and when things are supposed to happen. So you can see you guys are now out of phase. You are now in 10 to 14. That's because we had a, a gap. But the idea is what are we trying to do? So um, here is the uh, program. Here are our outcomes and our ob objectives. And here okay. is the little assignment. So. Let's make it a bit smaller. So how are we going to de determine whether we think you have understood and can do the doing? All right. So in order to complete module 2B, you will be required by Friday. Actually, all the other groups have had till the following Wednesday. So, but soon um, uh, to um, submit at least two OERs to the national repository. All right, to, to the EduConnect, which is the Zimbabwe Mopsi repository. So, and here are some criteria, how we're going to mark it. All right. Is there evidence that the participant has adapted or created two or more new quality teaching and learning resources? So we're going to be looking for your OERs. Have, are those, on those OERs, does it clearly state uh, how it is aligned with the specific MOPSI curriculum statement. So we want you to be able to say, this OER is useful for achieving this teaching outcome, all right, or objective. Okay, and then it says, added a Creative Commons license to each resource. So then we want to say, well, where is your little license? How do we know that this is open? All right, so then we're going to look for your little license plate, which is in module three, it tells you how to, uh, uh, unit three. How to do it. And then finally, have you been able to upload it into the repository? That's number four. And the uh, again, 
tutorial number four will tell you how to do that. All right, so there you go. So if you want to get uh, the completion of module um, 2B and get the little certificate, there's a special sp certificate that comes from me, not from UNESCO, but it has UNESCO stickers all over it, um, um, to say that you have uploaded. Let me see if I can show you. Where's my fancy one? Give me a second. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. I'll give you a, a demo. Uh, give me a second. It is in here. Come, here we go. Projects, UNESCO, and certificate. Here it is. All right. So if you want your certificate, it looks something like this. This is to certify that Mr. Andrew Moore has completed Module 2B on these dates and has submitted openly licensed curriculum materials to the Mopsy EduConnect repository with the little UNESCO badge on and a special number, etc. then you need to make sure that you have completed the, the module assignment. Okay. All right. So I went very quickly through all that. Uh, please have a look at this document. It explains... Um, uh, what we're going to be doing, when we're going to be doing it, uh, and so on. And where all the links are, I'll put the link in the chat and in the and in the WhatsApp. So give me a second, and uh, then we'll open for questions, etc. Uh, Zoom, Zoom. Here we go. Chat. Where did the chat go? Here it is. All right, so um, I've put it in the chat. You can download that document and um, then you know what we're doing and when we're doing it. And we put it in the group as well. Group three, WhatsApp. All right, so there's a link in the, in the WhatsApp and there's a link in the Zoom. Okay, so what do people think? Let's open up and let's find out who's who in the zoo. We've got 27 participants at the moment. Uh, what you can do is you can call up the participants list. And then if you uh, go over your name and you go to the uh, right click, how do you put, put your hand up? I've forgotten. <laughs> how do you do that? Uh, Andrew Moore, Moore. Huh, I've forgotten. How do you put your hand up in Zoom? Move that onto my thing. Uh, Tapiwa, you can tell us. How did you get your hand up? I've forgotten. Tapiwa oh, okay. Nayadoro. Yes. Okay. There, there, there is a, um, at the right corner, there's way, way it's written more. And then you get that option and there's some emojis there. No, I oh, think yeah. there's more, there's more than reactions. So, okay, so, reaction. all right. So, you, um, so instead of the participant list, you go onto the, the main list of people. There's like little rectangles with their names in them. Sometimes if their video is on, you can see their video, all right? And then there's a little dot, dot, dot. You click on there, and then you can uh, go to reactions or ha uh, put your hand up, etc. All right. Um, Tapiwa, did you, uh, did you have something to say before, before we started talking about putting your hands up? I uh, know. I just I, I was just reacting to that question. Cool. All right, uh, Graham. Uh, what would you like to ask? Graham Mud Ziva. Hang on, let me just get the full name before I massacre it. Mud Ziva. Oh, Okay. Okay. Any other queries or questions? All right. So, oh, yes. Yes. Uh, Madala, uh, Partinus. Yes. All right. Any questions or queries? 
and I don't have any questions. Cool. Okay. You think you know what to do? Have you got all the links to be able to get them? I'll put the, the first tutorial in the WhatsApp as well. Just make it very easy. You can just click it. It's designed to look nice on your phone. All right. So um, even if you haven't got a tablet or anything like that, you can just access it on your phone. Hang on. Let me just give you the link. So for tonight, you need to do the tutorial. Now, let me warn you, the learning is all in the four tutorials. Okay, I'm not doing any lecturing. So tomorrow, I'm going to test you. So in our session tomorrow, I'll be running a test, all right, to see if any of the stuff in the tutorial has stuck in your head. All right, so I'm not going to lecture at any point. I am wanting you to complete the standalone tutorials on your own. All right. Let me just get, here we go. Copy. All right. So I'm going to put this in the WhatsApp group. All right. So I've put tonight's tutorial in the WhatsApp group. Um, if you are um, if if you are working from school, that means you've got to do it before you go home. If you feel you're going to use the school's Wi-Fi or school's connectivity, then um, you need to do it before you go home. Um, it needs to be finished before two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. All right. So tutorial one must be done, ready, and you need to come to your your uh, Zoom meeting ready for a test. I'm going to run it test so make sure you can answer uh things that are in that particular in that group all right um so yeah I, um, my group one were terrible they kept saying well where's the learning i said well why haven't you done the, the tutorial oh no 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 tutorial no oh, i don't know you must tell us no rubbish rubbish this is the new way of learning it's called by Cronus, it's a funny name, by Cronus, and it simply means that there's a little bit of chatting like Zoom and MS Teams and Google Meet and all those type of things. And then there's standalone work on your own stuff. And so those tutorials are asynchronous, all right? It means you've got to do it on your own. So don't keep waiting for me to tell you, you need to do the tutorials. Otherwise, you, otherwise it's a waste of time. All right. Uh, group two were very good. So they were way ahead because they were all working on the tutorials. And you can go faster if you want. You don't have to wait for one a night. If you go, oh, that was great. I've got some more time. Let me look at number two or number three or number four. It's cool. You can go at your own pace. But we will go one a night. So uh, Monday, number one. Um, and, uh, Tuesday, number two. Wednesday, number three, and Thursday, number four. And then on Friday, you guys are going to show me your OBRs. Okay, so the ones you've built or created um, or adapted, then uh, on Friday, we'll have a look at those. All right, so keep that in mind then. Um, no lectures. You must work on the tutorial. All the learning is in the tutorial. All right, tutorials is for. All right, any other queries? Let's have a look, any hands up? All right, I'm gonna keep these meetings pretty tight. Um, I find that if I guess yada, 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 you will go to sleep and um, then it's a waste of time. So are there any other queries? Oh yes, Chengeto has got your hand up. I wanted to find out, um... Our, is this meeting being recorded so that we can have uh, the recording on the WhatsApp group as well? Yes. So this evening, um, um, I will get the recording. I'll package it up neatly, and then I'll put the link to the recording in the WhatsApp group. All right. If you have a look at um, here, let me just show you where I'm. Uh, you can also come here, and you see uh, I will start putting in the recordings here for group three so that was group one there's their four recordings group two had five recordings you're going to have five so they will appear here let me give you this link as well because everything you need is on this link so let me also give you that one 
Uh, there were a few people who in, in the WhatsApp today said that for various reasons they can't be here. So that's another reason why we record them so that they can catch up. All right. All right. So I'll put the, uh, that second link in there is for everything. Everything you need is on this one page. So should you ever go, ah, oh, I can't find it, then you come here. All right. And then um, the recordings, the tutorials, the the training agenda here's the training agenda it's all in one place okay any other questions going going is it cold there it's freezing here in Joburg. i don't know what's going wrong summer's gone it's warm today oh that would be nice i've got my tops on oh i see i tell vision one plus has got their hand up it doesn't look like your name. It sounds like a computer. But anyway, how can we help? I tell Hello, how are you? Yes, yes. What's your name? I tell you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can. Now right, I can. I'm, I'm, Le I'm Len Mwama Kwani. Yes. Right. My question is, are we going to have these Zoom meetings from today up to Friday? Well, sometimes we're going to carry the, the workshop on, the, on our WhatsApp. Okay, to answer your question, yes, we are going to have a Zoom meeting every day at 2 o'clock, um, just for 40 minutes. All right, so you won't waste too much of your time. Um, but it's not a lecture. It will be um, troubleshooting, etc. All right, uh, and tests and things. Um, the WhatsApp group will continue to run. It's our there. So if you need quick help, use the WhatsApp. However, you must work through the tutorials. The tutorials will work whenever, 24-7, they're available 24-7, and, and you just click on the link and you go through. All right. Okay. All right. Any other queries, questions? I'm dying to know what Edward's showing us. You think that's his roof? Or do you think, what do you think that is? Edward P. Jambea. Okay. Looks like a roof. All right. And I can see Cliff looking very comfortable. And I can see Oswell. Looks like he's at work because it's all very efficient. He's got his tie on. Looking great. All right. Good, guys. That looks good. I'm going to stop the recording and I'll put the recording up in as soon as I'm ready. Oh, Edward. Very smart. Look at his kit. Wow. Edward, very sharp, very smooth. Okay, and um, thank you very much. I'll talk to you all tomorrow, 2 o'clock, Zoom. Use the same link and the same passcode to get in. We're going to use that throughout the week.